Ready to create your own Squee content? Well, good news, it's pretty easy. And this training is going to walk you through how to do it. I've already filled out the essential fields of this event planner, including my event title and scheduled time. Now, I want to add an RSVP survey. This is optional, but highly recommended, and best to do before guests start submitting their RSVPs. Click the big yellow button near the bottom of the page to open the RSVP survey builder. If I had an RSVP survey share code, also known as an R code, I would click import survey and enter it there. But I'm gonna create a new survey. So I click add a question and a blank open answer question is placed into my survey. The open answer question type provides a field for guests to type in any response they want. So all I need to enter is my question. Pro tip. This answer choice is great for collecting phone numbers so that you can begin texting your guests or for asking broad questions that don't have an easily defined set of responses. Now I'll add a multiple choice question using the drop down menu to select either a single answer or multiple answer question type. How do you choose which one to use? It's the difference between what's your favorite color where your guests select one answer choice, and what colors do you like, where most guests select as many answers as they want. With both of these two question types, I'll need to enter both my question and a set of answer choices. If I wanna change the order of questions, I can click the up and down arrows to the left side of the question I want to move. To share this survey with fellow teammates, I can give them the RSVP share code, the R code. You can also reuse your own R code to duplicate this survey for your own future events. I'm done, so I click save to save my work and return to the event planner. Notice that the button has now completely filled in with yellow, which indicates that a survey has been added to my event. My host could start inviting guests to RCP to this party now that there's a survey ready and waiting for them. I don't need to add the event timeline at this point, but I want to, so I'm gonna go ahead and click the big orange button to open the timeline builder. Whether you want to import an existing timeline or build a new one, start by clicking the big plus button in the top left corner. You see the six types of posts that you can add to your timeline. I'm gonna start with an image post. Now, Squee is not a graphics program. If you need to create a graphic for this post, I recommend getting a Canva account, even just a free account, and using the Design on Canva button to create a fabulous graphic for this post. There is a whole separate lesson on how to do that. I already have a graphic that I want to use saved on my computer, and you can use graphics that you already have. Click the post area, select the graphic, and upload it. The graphic file types you can upload are JPEG, Ping, and if you want a motion graphic, use a GIF file. I love motion graphics with small animations because it really helps bring an otherwise flat post to life. So that's what I have here. Next, I'm gonna add a video post. Unlike the graphic posts, I'm not going to upload a video file directly to the post. Instead, all I need is the link to a video that has already been uploaded to YouTube or Vimeo. It could be a video created by your company that's on their channel, or a team member's video, or your own video on your own channel. YouTube and Vimeo both offer free accounts that will work fine here. Click the Change Video button, swap the default video link for your own link, look up the video, and use the video. Then click here to save the thumbnail for this post. You can click the post to open the video on its YouTube or Vimeo channel to preview it. During the party, the video will play from directly inside Squee. Before I continue adding new posts, I'm gonna go ahead and add products. First, click the Add New Product button. If I was creating all new products, I could do it here, but I already have the products I need in my product library. So I'm gonna click the Add From Library tab. I'm on a video post, so let's pretend this video is about drinkware items. I wanna add the specific products that are featured in this video. I've given those products a drinkware tag. So I'm gonna click it to filter all products to only the drinkware. 
Then I clicked Select All to select them. I'm going to click one of them to exclude it, and you can see how it is no longer selected. Then I click Update to apply those products to the post. While I'm here, I'll add products to the first post as well. I click the Previous button to select that post, and this time I'll use the search field to find the t-shirts, select them manually, and apply them to the post. Let's add some more posts. The wheel and ball posts are two post types that guests interact with to receive a randomized result. The biggest difference is that the wheel post shows all of the possible results to the guests, and the ball post hides them. I'll add a wheel post to my timeline. I click the pencil to edit the post, enter a title, and then start entering result options. You can have a minimum of two and a maximum of 10. Here I'll enter three results. I'd like to see what it looks like, so I click Save and Preview. Looks great, so I click Save and Close. Next, let's add a poll question. Just like with the RSVP survey, I have three options. Single answer, multiple answer, and open answer. Enter a question and a few answer choices. This particular question is great to include near the end of your parties to help you identify who needs help, who might want to host a party themselves, and even who might be your next team member. You can use the T-code on the screen to import this question into your own account. Poll posts look great with a colored background, and they look even better in the party than they do here. You can use the color picker or enter a hex code to select your color. Last, I'll enter a time to shop post. This post will show all the products from all the posts in your timeline in one single place. You don't need to do anything but insert it into the timeline, though you can customize the default title and how to shop instructions if you'd like. What you see here is a placeholder. The post will start displaying your products when you're in the party. I can select any post in the event timeline column to load it for editing, and I can click a post grab handles to drag it to a new location in the timeline. All right, I'm done building my timeline. You'll see it has a share code, which is a T code, already assigned to it if I want to share it with my teammates. Click the Close Timeline button to return to the event planner. The last thing is to schedule some chat messages that Squee will automatically post for me during the party. So I will click the big blue button to open the Schedule Chat Builder. Schedule Chat is an automated chat script. Schedule chats are optional, but if you already know what you'll say on certain posts, you'll love having those chats posted for you automatically you can spend less time frantically typing or copying and pasting text from a separate document and more time focusing on responding to your guest's chat messages. For example, I know I want to post a welcome chat right after the event starts, so I click the Add New Chat button for post one and enter a welcome. I'll follow up with a second message, so I click the Add Another Chat link. I'll delay this one so that it appears to guests 10 seconds after the post loads. It's better to have two short messages than one long message because it will feel more natural in the flow of the party chat. To revise a chat message, I'm going to click it, make my edits, and save. To delete a chat message, click the red X next to it. When finished, just click the Back to Event Planner link. Although it has a separate button, the scheduled chat is actually part of an event timeline, and it will be imported along with that timeline when you share it with others or when you reuse it yourself. So if you included any personal details in your scheduled chat, be sure to have your teammates edit this in their copy of the timeline before they use it.